Dear students, welcome you all in Compiler Construction class, lecture number 10. Today we will discuss the syntax directed translation. And today's uh, outline is a recap session. We will discuss the what we have done in previous and then we will discuss about the symbol table, how the symbol table is used to, in compiler and then we will discuss about the recovery, error recovery sessions, the how the compiler recovered the errors in, in, in particular stages when we implement the compiler in the lexical analyzer, then semantic analyzer, then intermediate code generator, code optimization and finally code generation. Then after that there is a error recovery session that maintains the all, all different modules to check the different errors, logical errors, semantical errors, your uh, syntax errors. After that we will perform the uh, syntax directed translations, the how syntax directed translation is implemented in the semantic analysis and intermediate code generations. So let us start, uh, one step we go the back what we have covered right now, S we have discussed uh, different stages of compiler, I hope you guys are remember that stages. We start from a lexical analyzer, then we move to the parser and then we move, move to the intermediate code generator and then we move to the optimization and finally code generation. There are the different stages. So first of all we will discuss the uh, lexical analyzer. In lexical analyzer we give the source codes, source code of uh, different programming languages. If you have a compiler in C, you will put the C source code. If you have a compiler Java, you put the Java code. So different compilers have a different source codes. So I hope you quite quite familiar about the source codes. So we put the source code, and the, what the lexical analyzer do? It breaks the that codes in the different tokens. The tokens that it breaks to the different types of token. Some tokens are uh, literal, some tokens are the characters, some tokens are the keywords, some are the special characters. So lexical analysis also identify the white right type of characters is used in source program. It covers the all. First suppose if you have a program, that program has the two loops, far loop and inner loop. In inner loop and far loop there's a two loops. So what will the lexical analyzer do? It combines the, it shows that there is a two far loops used into the particular source program. So it manages into the groups. When we have multiple, multiple uh, tokens, it makes into the mapping to the groups. So then there is a parser, parser will take the tokens and pass, pass through the different types. We have already discussed there is a passing different types, top down passing and bottom up passing. So top down passing what we will do, it is start from the root and pass to the leaves. So when you are designing the CFG, the CFG will start from the S and that CFG reach on the terminals. I hope you guys are quite familiar about the terminals and non-terminals. Yes, yes, terminals are your strings, what, we, what you are going to pass and non-terminals are your variables which you are used to write the particular strings. So in top down passing, there is a different type categories of top down passing. We will use the L, uh, recursive descent parser, recursive pa descent parsers again divide in two parts, backtracking, non-backtracking. But in, mostly we will not implement the backtracking section. If we implement in our compiler designing backtracking, so our compiler will uh, take more time. So this ap approach in top down parser will be rejected that we implement the non-backtracking algorithms. So non-backtracking algorithms again divided into the LL1 parser and, and, and predictive parser. So LL parser stand for left to right scanning, left most derivation and left most scanning. And one stand for the look ahead. In that you provide how many characters, how many elements that algorithm is looked to particular strings. In, in that algorithm, when you are implementing the LL1 parser, you need to be algorithm, you need to have a, a string and you need to have a, your stack. When you are practically implement that, you are passing implement in particular in techniques. When you are matching particular strings, that will be matched into the stack area. So stack is always start from a dollar sign. Why we are storing the dollar sign? Can anybody know? Hmm. By checking the strings, once our uh, stack is empty, it means that our string is passed. 
if our string is not empty, stake is not empty, there are some strings, so we need to check again and again. So that's why we are always declare the dollar signs into the LL1 parser. Don't worry, if you are not declaring the dollar sign, you can use also other signs. There's no restriction. But by default, the compiler designs, they implement the dollar sign approach. And then we will discuss the, the bottom up parser. Bottom up parsers are used to the shift reduce parser. We have already discussed shift reduce parser. It shift and reduce. Shift means move your strings to the particular, particular characters. And reduce means to, to decrease the strings. So we will use the two techniques, shifting our input and reducing our input. And that shift reduce parcel is again divided into three types. SL parser, simple left recursive parser, then LR parser, then SLLR parser, means simple look ahead parser. In that SLLR parser, you need to look ahead. You need to look ahead the particular strings, particular inputs, then you do need to be a parsing. So these are the two different techniques mostly implementing when we are designing the compilers. But most of compilers, they use the top-down parsing rather than implementing a bottom-up parsing. What is the reason why they are implementing the bottom-up parsing? Backtracking. Yeah. Backtracking issues and there's a CFG issues. When, when you are designing the top-down parsing, there's the three major issues we have encountered. I hope you guys are remember that issues. What are the issues? <laughs> Ambiguities in your grammars and left recursions in your grammars and left factoring issues. Means okay, when you are designing the bottom top down parser, you need to take care of three things. Okay, your CFG must be a not ambi ambiguous. If there is ambiguities in your CFGs, so you, you should e eliminate that ambiguities. After ambi eliminating the ambiguities, you need to take care of left recursion. Okay, your, your strings, your CFGs, they are not repeating from the left side. If they are repeating from the left side, you need to convert them into right, right recursion. So top down passes mostly prefer the left right side recursion, not left side recursions. So we need to the convert our CFGs, life recursions. So mostly the pro compiler designers, they implement that technique. They will not implement it algorithmically. In last lectures in lab, I have implemented that same program. We are doing, we are eliminating a left recursion by using the programs. But when you are designing compiler, you need to take care of these things before, before designing a parser. Then third issue is a left factoring. Left factoring means your CFGs is not, not non-deterministic. If the CFGs is a non-deterministic, you need to convert them deterministic. Then how we convert that deterministic? We remove repetition. We need, we need to remove, remove our common factors. If our once one rule is uh, repeating every time strings A again and again, second rules, you need to eliminate that A. You need to use once time. So we will take the common factors from the all rewriting rules. The, these are the three particular issues we all always face when we're designing the top-down parsing. Okay, then this is a lexical analyzer. Lexical analyzer, mostly when we design lexical analyzer, we need to take care of strings. Okay, what, what time kind of strings we are using and we need to take care of the regular expressions, how regular expressions are we use, how, what are the rules should be implementing the regular expressions. I hope I guess you guys are familiar about the, what are the rules we are implementing. Yes, sir, sir. What are the rules? Anybody tell me? We need to use the star. We need to use the clean star. We need to use the clean closure. We need to use the cap sign. These are the different techniques. When we are implementing, when we are designing a regular expression, you need to take care of the rules. If you know familiar about the rules, rules you can easily design that particular regular expression. Yes, so we have also designed an email regular expression. Yes, you all are familiar. Yes, then we discuss the tokens. What kind of tokens are uh, existing when we are giving the program? There are some to tokens are the 
uh, identifiers, some tokens are your literals, some tokens are your variables, and some tokens are your special character. So when the lexical error arises to the program, it identifies also what kind of what categories are used in your tokens. Then we have a transition diagrams and finite automata. This finite automata and NFA and DFA. Mostly we also that thing used to parsing our particular strings. If we are designing a particular CFG, that CFG is a, like a, you are matching with the even or odd numbers. So in that CFG, that regular expression, you need to first design the NFA. Because NFA is more than easy than the DFA. If you design completely NFA, because it provides different flexibilities. There's a NFA, there's a lambda moves, there's a epsilon moves. You can easily design that NFA. Then that NFA will be converted into DFA. So more easier. Mostly when we are final stage, we are, we are designing the automatic machines, self-acting machines, we implement the DFAs. Then there's a parser. We have already discussed CFGs. We discussed the different grammars. Uh, Chomsky normal form, context free grammars. Then there's the derivations. I told you that there are two type of derivations, left derivation and right deriv derivation. If you are top down using top down parser, you will implement the left derivation. If you are implementing the bottom up parser, you will implement the right direction derivation. Then there's the parse trees. We have also designed the parse trees, and then we minimize that parse trees designing by the ASTs. Abstract syntax tree. It is the minimized version of your pass tree. When your parser design a pass tree, you, yes, there's a, some stage that minimize that pass tree into the AST. Then, then top down parsings. We have already discussed top down parsing. We use the LL parser. There's a bottom up parsing. There's a different categories of bottom up parsing LR, SLR, LA, LR. Means to look ahead, left, scanning. Now what is what's remaining? Remaining is uh, the two parts in two phases. That is a symbol table and error recovery. In in my previous lectures, I just uh, theoretically just discussed the symbol table that is connected through the all stages. It provides the structure. It provides a, a verification process from the all stages. When you are searching particular elements, when you are designing a particular compiler, your compiler structure, your compiler codes, what, what kind of variable you use, what kind of keywords you are used, what kind of structure you are used, that structure is already stored in the symbol table. So when compiler performing a particular stage, that is in that stage, they will check everything from the symbol table. Either your, your variables, the, your, your different loops, you are, first suppose you have three loops you are using, for loop, while loop, do while loop, the do while loops structure is already stored, stored in the symbol table. So that when you are giving the program compiler, compiler will check from the symbol table. So symbol table is the most important data structure created, maintained by the compilers in order to store the information about the occurrences, various entities such as the names, function names, your objects, classes, interfaces. Means, it means that whatever in your programming language, you are in C language, the C language, what kind of library you are used, what kind of interface you are used, what kind of classes you are used, and what kind of library already exists, the all of information is stored in the symbol table. So symbol table is stored the names of entities and the structures from one place to verify the variables are declared or not declared, means if you have declared any variable that if you are using one any very variable, just like a sum variable, but you have not declared that variable in, in the top, the symbol table will check that thing. Okay, variables, variables already declared or not declared. Not only a variable, anything. If you are using any function, like a count function, you are using in your program. But count for function, th this function is not declared in top of. So symbol table is the responsibility to check, check that. That function is declared or not declared. If there is not declared, they give the error. So errors you always face in the different IDs, that errors comes from the symbol table. That will be identified as. Then to implement the type checking, you are, you are using data types, same or right, right. Sometimes the data type, there are issues. Then verify the assignment operators. 
assignment operators you have used well or Rodnoid. Different languages have different assignment operators, different structure. That's why symbol table is designed for the every different languages. Not for C, not the if, if we have two programming languages C and Java, in both programming languages for compiler there is no symbol table same. Maybe might be a different because the structure is different. C structure is different, objected oriented is different. So when you are designing a compiler, you need to take care of also these things. Okay, you are designing symbol table properly or not. Then source code semantically correct. You need to check that source code, whatever you write, semantically right or wrong. Also check the syntax here, syntax. Okay, syntax is right or not, then check the semantic is right or wrong. And to determine the scope of, first suppose you are declaring the particular variables, that variables is used into the subclass. That 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 variables also used into the another class. So you need to take care of a scope also. I hope you have a scope, scope resolution operators already discussed in Java and different programming languages. Yes, sir. Then there's an entry format how your attributes are stored. Your attributes in store in the symbol name, type, and attribute. Symbol names means ki what symbol you are you are storing, what symbol you are fetching. Maybe you are fetching an integer type, maybe, maybe you are fetching a symbol that is character type. So you, you need to de declare also third, uh, second parameter is type. And, and third parameter is attribute. Attributes means your particular value. So this is a pictorial map of symbol table. Symbol table is uh, divided into the two parts global symbol table and inner symbol table means means when you are you are you have class and that class have a sub functions that sub functions have a different symbol table if you have a project that project have a global files then global files have a different symbol table and your subclasses have a different symbol table and different entries so symbol table is important data structure created and maintained by the compiler to store the information about the occurrences of various entities such as the names variables. So in the top of global symbol table, we have a declare a value pro1, pro2. And value is the type, we have declared a variable, is an integer type, have integer type. And second one is the two functions, pro1 and pro2 functions. Now in pro1 and pro2 functions, we have designed a separate symbol table. Means information of a, a function 1 or function 2 is stored in the separate table and your global table is stored the information about your own function. The what type of, what, what are the name of the functions. This is a program. In program, uh, there is a show the different uh, scopes of symbol tables. In the top pro1, this is the inner scope, means the variables the data that is used in, in particular program one, they show the scope is the inner. Again, we have inner scope two. Again, we have inner scope three. Means your functions, you are declaring your function, you are declaring classes. The classes have a inner scope. And your overall project, your overall source file, that have a global sco scope. So you need, you need to differentiate through the different programs. Then there's the implementation. We, we also implement the symbol tables in the linear and sorted on unsorted list. We, we also implement into the binary search trees and also hash tables. These are the implementation of the symbol tables. Then there's the operations. There are two type of operations. And when we are implementing the symbol table, insert and lookup. If, if you are designing a, any program, if you have completed your compiler, now you want to modify your compiler. In modification, you want to add some functions, some variables. You need to prefer always insert function. So insert function, what we will do? Insert function will insert the particular variables that you have added after completing your compiler. That insert function will add that features into your symbol table. Then the second function is a lookup function. It will check, it will search, means means that when you are giving the program, that programs in convert in the tokens, that tokens will check by using the lookup function from the symbol table. If these are variables, these are characters, are exist or not. If they are not exist, they will give us error, obviously. If they are exist, then they will return. 
the functionality of lookup function is a give the proper result. So how we use? We use declare a character symbol, then that character symbol you pass from the lookup function. And same way you are using the search function, then you have declared int variable, that int variables you are passing and, and showing the data type. If you are giving the data, that data is an integer or a string. So whenever you are giving something for insert, you need to also provide the data, data type. There is a lookup function. Lookup function always check that the symbols exist in the table or not. If it does not exist, it gives you a particular error. If it is declared before using, means you are using the particular variable, you are using the particular function, that function is already declared or not declared. If it is not declared, it will give the error. Means some sort of status it will shows. Then the name of use in the scope, if the symbol table is initialized, if symbol table is declared multiple times, maybe sometimes symbol table may multiple times declare a particular variable. They will also check that. And format of lookup function will verify according to the programming languages and the basic format should be a match with following. I hope you guys are to be clear about the lookup function. How? So it will match your functions, it will check your, your, your classes, it will check your libraries, it will check your variables, it will check your classes also, also check, it will check also your data types. This is a scope management. Compile and maintain the two type of symbol table. Global symbol table, which can be accessed to all procedures, all function, all classes. Means, you're, if you have a project, in project have a three different classes. You have all project is managed in three different classes. Like you are managing a faculty management system. In faculty management system, you have created a five different classes. In five different classes will be stored in the global table. And each class information will be stored into the sub-global tables. Means you are always, your data will be divided according to the, your programs, according to your applications. The so same way, in global symbol table, store the two functions. Again, symbol pro one function is a sim separate symbol table, pro two is a separate symbol table. Maybe a nested. It's not necessary. We just created the two, two symbol tables. Depends on your structure. Depends on your program. Depends on your library. If your library is a global functions, a global classes, then we need to create a symbol table for global. If there is a sub subclasses, means sub function, you need to also create a separate symbol table. So again, it depends on your program structure. Then uh, error recovery. I hope okay, you guys are familiar about these errors. Yes, sir. Error recovery is also checked from your all stages. You are passing the particular source program from a compiler. That source program is checked from the all stages, either lexical analyzer, either your syntax analyzer, either your semantic analyzer, either your code optimization, code generation, whatever the stage is that. But the errors will check from the all stages. So when you are giving your input, your source program, the source program passes from the all stages and identify the errors. That error might be a lexical, lexical, synthetical, semantical, logical. So I hope you guys are familiar about these errors. Yes, sir. What is synthetical error? Syntax, syntax error. Means your, in your program might be there missing semicolon, missing a brackets. So that will be covered into the syntax analyzer. Then semantic analyzer. What is semantic analyzer? Yeah. When you are design a particular program, that program is result is not calculating properly. Your, your result is not cal cal calculating properly. Your logics are not set properly. Then that will be a semantical error. Then there's a logical error. Same, like your, your code is not reachable in finite loop. It means that you write a program, that program is not breaking. It working just like an infinite loop. So these are the different errors. These errors will check from the all stages. Then the next part is the error recovery strategies. There are different uh, common strategies to implement parser to deal with the error codes. 
that is a panic mode, statement mode, error procedures, global corrections, abstract syntax trees. In panic mode, we will check that if our program has a some sort of error, some sort of errors, that error might be a your semicolon, yeah, might be your your keyword error, yeah, variables not declared properly. So it will break that code. It will stop execution. It will not check the whole program. It will stop and it will give us error. In that way, our speed of compiler will be minimized. Then the statement mode, then error productions, means you have designed a particular CFGs, that CFGs has a, has a particular errors. Means CFG is not designed properly. As I have told you that, there are, when we design a top-down parser, there are three issues. Ambiguity and left factoring and left recursions. So in that case, there's an augmented grammar that will check these errors. Then there's a global correction. Global correction will check the all overall errors from your programs. And then we have abstract syntax tree. We need to some other tools to implement to help the intermediate code generator. That is the semantic rules and semantic rules and semantic actions. So semantic rules are the syntax directed definition and semantic actions are the syntax directed translation. 